Three men shared a cell block called Unit One. There was Carl Williams, the gangland boss convicted of multiple murders and sentenced to 35 years in jail. Tommy Ivanovic, his friend and godfather to Williams's young daughter, Dakota. And Matthew Johnson, also considered a friend and ally by Carl Williams. Matthew Johnson appear behind an oblivious Carl Williams brandishing the metal stem of an exercise bike. He hits him to the head, knocking him to the floor and then rains seven very heavy blows on Williams, killing him. Johnson then drags Williams to a nearby cell by the ankles and returns and covers the area that's covered in blood with a white towel. There are no guards present throughout the whole video. And the court heard that Matthew Johnson and Tommy Ivanovic then walked laps of the exercise yard for nearly half an hour before alerting prison guards to William's death. Okay. This is a tape recorded interview between uh, Detective Senior Sergeant Peter Harrington and Matthew Charles Johnson, uh, currently at the Bowen Prison, conducted at the Bowen Prison on. Uh, the 19th day of April 2010. Um, also present uh, was uh, my corroborator, Senior Detective Scott Riley, and also uh, the video operator Scott Harris from the video uh, um, of Crime Scene Unit, who's conducting the video interview. Um, do you agree um, that the time now is about 8 minutes to 8? PM? Yep. 752. Okay, what's your full name and address, please? Matthew Charles Johnson, Barlow Prison. Okay, I intend to uh, further interview you in relation to uh, the death of Carl Williams. Before continuing, I must inform you that you're not, or well, you do not have to say or do anything, but anything you say or do may be given in evidence. Do you understand that? I must also inform you of your rights. You have the right to communicate with or attempt to communicate with a friend or relative to inform that person of your whereabouts. You have the right to communicate with or attempt to communicate with a legal practitioner. If you're not a citizen or permanent resident of Australia, you have the right to communicate with or attempt to communicate with a consular office of the country of which you're a citizen. Do you understand these rights? Yes. Do you wish to exercise any of these rights before the interview proceeds? No. Are you an Australian citizen? Yes. Are you a permanent resident in Australia? Yes. Are you of Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander descent? No. Okay. Um, as I say, I intend to uh, interview in regards to the death of Carl Williams. Have you got any comment to make about that? No comment. No comment? No comment. Um, I put it to you that um, Carl Williams was located in the Acacia Ward, um, or unit, deceased, uh, uh, approximately uh, seven, or sorry, twelve forty-eight today, this afternoon. Have you got any comment to make about that? No comment. Take it. Uh, do you intend to answer all my questions in that way? Yes. Okay. Um, I put it to you um, that you, in fact, caused certain injuries to Carl Williams. What have you to say about that? No comment. Um, I put it to you that you hit Mr. Williams around the head with a particular object. What have you to say about that? No comment. And as a result of those injuries that have been inflicted on Mr Williams, he subsequently died. Have you got any comment to make about that? No comment. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say at this stage, Mr Rowan? No, I don't think there's anything. Okay. Um, is there anything um, 
further you'd like to say in regards to, to the death at this stage? Just I acted alone. Sorry? I acted alone. D- did you want to clarify that? Or that's that, all. That's all? Okay. Were there any other persons present at the no, time? Are you aware um, that there is um, video within the prison complex? No comment. Okay. Um, okay. Well, at this stage, I'll advise you that you're going to be charged with the murder of Carl Williams. You do not have to say or do anything unless you wish to do so, but whatever you say or do may be recorded and given as evidence. Do you understand that? Yes. Do you wish to say anything in answer to the charge? No. Do you wish to make a further statement in relation to the matter? No. Okay. There's only one other thing that I'm uh, um, wanting to do at this point in time, and that's to uh, make a request for a forensic procedure to be conducted. Okay. Um, so what I intend to do is uh, give you some information and read some information um, to you and, and uh, see whether you're prepared to undertake that process. Yep. Okay. Do you agree that the time is about 7.57? Please. Yes. Okay. Um, on the 19th of the 4th, 2010, we're currently at the Barlow Prison. Your name is Matthew Charles Johnson. It's 36, you just say? Yep. 36. And you're male? Yep. Okay. You are charged with the offence of murder. You are being requested to undergo a forensic procedure which tend, would tend to confirm or disprove your involvement in the commission of an indictable offence, which is specified above murder. The nature is, uh, of the procedure that we seek to conduct is, or are, sorry, the note, I'll start again, the nature of the procedures that we seek to conduct are, you may request that the procedure to be conducted by or in the presence of a medical practitioner nurse of your choice. If the procedure is the taking of a dental impression, you may request that the procedure be conducted by or in the presence of a dentist of your choice. The procedures could produce evidence to be used in court. The information obtained from analysis of forensic material obtained obtained by the the procedure will be placed on a DNA database and may be used for the purpose of a criminal investigation or any other purpose for which the DNA database may be used under Part 3, Division 1, Subdivision 30A of the Crimes Act 1958 or under a corresponding law of the participating jurisdiction. You may refuse to undergo the procedures. What we'd be seeking um, is a um, buckle swap um, and um, examination. If, uh, so it's uh, um, if you refuse to undergo the procedures um, as defined as compulsory procedure, member of the police force may make application to a magistrate court for an order authorising the conduct of the procedures, or a senior plea, police officer may authorise a non-intimate compulsory procedure. That's what we're after: is a non-intimate procedure. If you are held in a prison, police, jail or youth training centre or in an installation with a meaning of section 56 of the Corrections Act 1986 and within 24 hours of receiving the above information, you refuse or fail to consent uh, the request to undergo a forensic procedure, then it will be considered that you have refused consent. Do you understand all that information? Do you wish to comment on any of this information? No. Do you consent to the request to undergo a forensic procedure? Yes. 
Okay, if I just get you, if you don't mind, uh, the suspect's acknowledgement, I understood the information given to me by police and I've received a copy of this form and I'll give you a copy of the form. So I'll just get you to sign in, Matt. Thank you. Is there anything you'd like to say at this stage, Mr. Wright? Uh, no, I don't think so at this stage. Okay. Um, well, what I propose to do uh, is suspend the interview. Um, do you agree that the time by my watch is uh, about 8.01 yep. p.m.? Thanks, Mickey. Thanks, mate. Sorry, it's taken.